a new show. I'm going on a show Monday night. So I'm going on the show Monday night, The Young Jerks. Check them out. It's like a play on The Young Turks. Uh, they are a, a radical leftist. Or, I don't know. They, I think they're leftist. And uh, so like they're probably going to take a lot of heat for having me on. And that's fine. But I love it. Like I, I love to show that this case crosses partisan lines. Like that's the beauty of this. That this is not, you can't even be like, like even people who hate me and disagree with me on everything have to have, we have to unite on this one the corruption needs to be exposed hey coral <laughs> you local moron local moron no mike's the young jerks monday night yes we are radical left we can't yes see that's what i love about this there we go and we're like it's and we're going to talk about how i'm going to promote a soros funded district attorney candidate to take down michael morrissey when he runs for re-election that's what we're going to talk about amongst other things. So, all right, guys, we're going to call it a night. And uh, thank you guys all for joining me and in supporting justice for Karen Reed and John O'Keefe. And we will see you guys all. Uh, I'll see you guys on the Young Jerks on Monday night and then my show Tuesday night. And we're going to have a busy week. All right. Peace, Turtle Riders. You are listening to the award-winning The Young Jerks with Mike Crawford. We're live, Mike Crawford, Young Jerks. Doing a show I didn't think I would ever do with a guest I never thought I would have on. I don't know whether I'm super excited or upset. It's like so many thoughts going, like I'm like overreacting, you know, but. I want people to know this is serious for me tonight. Like, uh, just my inner being. Like, I, I, I feel a lot on all sides of this, and I know that I have a controversial guest on the show, but I, there's a reason I'm doing this. There's a reason I'm doing this, and I, I, I hope people listen to the end. Um, yeah, I mean, let's just say that I, I think people. Well, we got a lot of listeners right now. I got a love hate affair with this next guest, Turtle Boy. He's one of the most gifted people. I felt I've fallen in love with him. I'm going to say it tonight, but I also hate a lot of the shit that comes with it. And myself, I'm not a perfect person. I wasn't a perfect person. And so that's why I want to have this forum tonight. I think uh, we've, the left has failed itself lately a lot because we can't even have a discussion. We can't even have a say at the plate. People are canceling the show tonight. People on the left. We're like the leading left show for nine years. We've done, we are pure. We're, we're, we are so goddamn pure. We followed all your rules and regulations and we're not doing that anymore. So I, I am a huge LGBTQ supporter. I love Black Lives Matter. I love the working man. I love women. I love Jewish people. Like I, you know, this is my family. And a lot of the family's upset because I'm having this guest on tonight. So, and I get it. You know, I was friends with Monica Cannon Grant. That's how I got to know who Turtle Boy was. And I saw what he did to her, 100, 100 columns, 100 stories. And I also saw how Monica fueled the fire. Both sides were fueling. And who won that, Turtle Boy? Turtle Boy just kept winning and winning and winning and winning because we're not being even smart. We're not even. So I, I've my friendship with Monica is basically gone and I'm worried about Monica still to this day. And I'm not saying Monica is innocent. So that's how real we're going to get tonight. People I love and care about, this guy's gone after them. But at the same time, you can't ignore him. You can't ignore the work he's done. Like, there's good shit about Turtle Boy. And if you want to be a fair critic, you got to be honest. Like, he's done a lot of good shit. Like, that's the thing. I've been watching his show, and I'm fucking, like, cheering on Tur Turtle Boy. So maybe he can have a redemption angle. Maybe, I, I want to know if Turtle Boy has any left-wing friends who aren't idiots. Maybe I want to be that guy. Maybe I do. Maybe I do. People are going to say it's about listens and clicks and views and I'm platforming the guy. 
But there's another issue on this. This is free Karen Reed. This is about like it could happen to anybody. If cops could just kill people. And this guy is killing them. He's killing the media. He's killing the left. And we're not supposed to talk about it. If we talk about it, we have to attack him so he can use more content against us. He wins every time. You guys look like you guys are jackasses on the left lately, like with his shit. Like the only way you ever win campaigns is for people to start to like you. And more people like the troll turtle boy than they like the left. I have friends who are Trumpers. And why am I friends with them? Because I think I can influence them. So maybe I'm going to try to influence Turtle Boy's audience tonight. Maybe I'm going to try to influence Turtle Boy himself, the impossible. The guy everyone says I should not trust. So we're doing this type of show tonight. We're going to talk about the politics very briefly. The, the people canceling me have Turtle Boy respond to this real quickly. I don't think Monica Cannon Grant should do 40 years in jail. And I don't think she's innocent. So I think Monica Cannon Grant should take a deal and the best deal she can. And I think the federal government, the FBI, should be nice to her and give her some rehab, some real rehab, like mental health. Because this work isn't easy. I know. I get it worse than almost anybody. And I'm sure even Turtle Boy gets affected by this shit. He's never probably shown it before. Maybe he just doesn't care. He's such a badass. He is a badass. This guy's kind of expired me in a way. So free Karen Reed, we're going to be talking about most of the show. But first, we'll deal with the fucking politics. And this guy, Turtle Boy, has broken. If you're a leftist, he's broken the biggest police corruption stories in the in the country, basically. Trooper Gate alone. Over and over and over and over again. He's phenomenal at his show. You can't beat him. Anything you put up against him, he's going to come back at you. You could maybe try to sue him. You could spend your whole life trying to sue him. But he seems to win there every time. So I'm taking a different tack tonight. I'm criticizing when I don't agree. I don't agree with the way he went after Shimmy. I don't like the way he went after Lauren either. Even though I think Lauren, you know, poked the turtle. When you poke the turtle, you're going to get something back. So I'm going to be, I think, a fair critic to the turtle when he does wrong. And I'm going to boost him when he does well. And I'm going to ask the turtle, let's not punch down as much anymore. You don't need it anymore, man. You're killing it. This O'Keefe shit. That's what I even think your right wing audience wants. If they know any better. I'm talking to them too. So let's bring in. I can't believe I'm doing this. That was just up, quite man? the intro. That's quite the intro. Have you ever got an intro like that? No, it was deep. It was good. I liked it. I thought it was fair. And I'm looking forward to the discussion we're going to have here because you haven't taken a lot of shit for this and uh, it happens, you know, uh, but I think I, I know that a lot of your audience uh, will watch this and I'd like to explain who I am because sometimes I feel yeah. like I'm kind of misrepresented. I want to know everything about you, motherfucker. Well, you know, uh, where would you like to start? Tell me. Um, well, what we don't know. Like, all right. So like with Monica, right? Like, so what was my deal with Monica? Like, let's not forget the Monica thing didn't start with me. It started with Jamal Crawford. Like Jamal Crawford was the one who was leading the anti-Monica movie. Like he was trying to get me to write about Monica before I ever did. And, you know, so he was like, it, it, resentment for Monica didn't start with some white guy from, from Holden, right? It started with it. the black, dude, uh, black guy from Boston. Same, same thing with me. And I love Jamal. And yeah. I was in the middle of that. I was in the middle between you, Jamal, Monica. And I, I, I like you all. I like Monica. I like Turtle Boy. I like fucking Jamal. Yeah. And, and uh, you know, kill I me. think that... Kill me. Uh, I'm the worst person in the world. Go ahead. No, I mean, so, I mean, and, and the people giving you shit about this, it's like, they're not... None of them actually give a shit about the core tenets of liberalism because this story entails it all, right? They, they should be all over this story and the Sandra Birchmore story, too. They're not because they don't want to be associated with me. So it's not even about what you actually believe in. It's about not wanting to associate with people who's, you know, you disagree with on 99% of other shit. And yeah, I did write about some of these people. And you're right. The Lauren Pispisa, I think that's who you're talking about. I, I don't know if she's still with 
Is she associated? Is she on? She's she on the show, a, right? Uh, she was a big part of the show. She was a host. Okay. She got busted. She was the co-host of the show. And I oh, knew okay. she had issues, but I didn't know what they were. We thought it was prescription. And yeah, she did you know, have uh, issues, but it wasn't what people put it out to me. And I am very proud of her. She came back from something. That I don't is, know the first thing about her besides yeah. what I get on Google, right? But so I like, get it. I but get it. came at me, so I go back. I it's like stay, it's just that. That's it. why I want to have this conversation. <laughs> I want to like, fucking like let's drop the temperature on all sides. This country is at war with yes. the Trump shit and the mm. Biden shit. Like, can we talk to each other once in a while? Like, like, legitimately. Yeah, right. I totally agree, and and that's why I love this story, uh, because I think it it unites people. It's it's completely apolitical uh it, it it doesn't even like there's really no political aspects to the story whatsoever it's just a right versus wrong it's a powerful versus unpowerful thing like that's like the most powerful people in uh, in norfolk county have come together and they're basically telling the rest of us our society like we are going to do this to this woman and we are going to cover up for people who quite obviously killed this man and there's nothing you can do about it and it's just it's like, no, are you like, I thought it's completely changed my view of what this country is. I'm like, if, if they're willing to do this out in the open, so overtly like this, what are they doing covertly? Like it has opened my, it has changed my opinion on policing, criminal justice reform. I still like, here's the thing with police, right? Like I have a lot of friends who are cops, like personal friends. They're good people. Right. And they go to work every day. They're not corrupt. But one thing I notice about all of them is none of them rise, <laughs> none yeah, of them yeah, rise yeah. and they're all counting down the years to retirement and they all hate the job because it's politics. And I feel like the kind of people that rise in politics are, 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 are in policing are people like Ken Berkowitz, right? Are people like, um, I don't know, you name it. They all have skeletons. They all did something to get where they are. You watch the wire. Uh, I've seen and some I, of it, you know, and I know it's a TV and, show, but it's, it's the same idea. It's like oh, workplace on. politics, you know, those who play the game the best and cover, for, you know, cover, do favors for somebody else. They rise the most. Those people who play by the books and have like a solid set of ethics, they go by, they go nowhere. And in Canton, what we're seeing, right, is the police chief and the former police chief, th they know how to play ball. They know how to go along to get along. Whereas, you know, I don't know what the rank and files like. Cause they're too cowardly to even, you know, speak out. Everyone's afraid of losing their job. All it takes is one. I call them the cowards of Canton because although they're not in on the conspiracy, I want to make that very clear. I have never asserted that the Canton police are in on this conspiracy. The Canton police are guilty of being cowards because their work, like the Canton police got to the crime scene at six o'clock and it was no tail light there they made and no shoe there they made made sure to note that in their report 12 hours later the state police find a whole bunch of tail light and a shoe and where did that and that in and of itself is suggesting the can police are completely incompetent so the can police didn't plant that there but the can police at the same time are their their silence is complicity it's cowardly that they're not standing up and saying no no no, no. that actually wasn't there that that's not the case so that's my thoughts on that. And for people who uh, don't know your background right now, the green screen behind you is the house in Canton, right? So this is uh, John's body was found over here, like a little over yonder. Okay. Uh, down 12 feet from the curb. And uh, she got, he got dropped off on this side uh, by the driveway. He ran right in. It was, it was snowing out. So it was probably within two or three seconds. He just boom, ran to the door. So the car behind him uh, with Ryan Nagel and it didn't actually see him. And, you know, it all makes sense. Um, but then later on, he was found over there at uh, six o'clock in the morning by Karen and two other women, uh, one of whom is certainly involved in the conspiracy to cover this whole thing up. And yeah, so that's the house behind me. And. You know, I, I got so many questions. I want to go with this. Sure. There's like base the, the the like latest news is about this DA Morrissey. Yeah. So let's yeah, you want to talk about him? Yeah, let's talk all about. So him. Uh, so what'd you think of his press conference? I mean, it was ridiculous. I I noticed it very quickly. Like two lies. Like basically, what I see is total lies. Because you know, from the documents you provided, it seems like. 
he straight up lied. And number yeah. two, it's like he's attacking us all. Mm -hmm. Like even me on the show tonight, I was like, am I going to get a cease and desist or have a turtle boy from the DA? I mean, I don't think they're that nuts, but it just seems pretty nutty. I mean, you never know. Like, well, it's like, why can't weird. you know, I've never seen anything like in my life. Well, I've never seen anything like it either because you don't assume that like I assumed that, yeah, OK, there's probably a little corruption with the police. Like maybe a guy gets a DUI and they look the other way, you know, something like that. Right. I didn't think they'd cover up a murder. I did not think that this was a thing that they would do to protect some shit bum kid named Colin. Okay. I don't, uh, uh, but apparently that that's what they're willing to do. And the district attorney is willing to go on video and make up easily disprovable lies that he knows that the public is going to be able to disprove. Like the most obvious lie was when he said that Michael Proctor, the lead detective was not at the scene at Fairview road the entire day, except his own charging documents clearly say in plain English multiple times, Michael Proctor was at the scene. And so he's just lying to us. And he knows that we can just look at his own documents and realize this is not true what you're saying. And that should scare everyone that somebody with that amount of power to run our entire legal and judicial system is willing to just make up a blatant lie, knowing damn well that you can find the truth for yourself and you're not going to do shit about it. Cause you can't do shit about it because he wins with 98% of the vote every four years. And he's got $512,000 in his campaign war chest, which he's never had to spend because he runs unopposed and he lives in a state where there is a obviously political monopoly uh, for one side. Like, so I'm a Republican, but I'm not like naive enough to think that a Republican can win that seat. So I'm, I wouldn't even bother with that. What I would suggest is that he got primaried, you know, and, and, and the primary challenge needs to come from the left. Like, that's the thing that's happening in this country now is like establishment conservatives. Like, I forget the name of the guy that AOC replaced, but like Michael Capuano, like there's, there's, there's a whole bunch of heads like that, that they've taken a whole bunch of skulls. Absolutely. That and that, that, that like I would say Rashawn Hall, Rashawn Hall ran in Plymouth for DA. The guy's an ACLU guy, black young man, very clean cut, against who Cruz. I think so. I, he, whoever it was, he, it was a close primary. Right. And so, you know, like I wouldn't obviously normally not support a candidate like that because of my politics. But in this case, this transcends politics. Like we cannot have a blatantly corrupt liar like that running our judicial system. It's dangerous for everyone. Now, I wouldn't want someone like Rachel Rollins because she turned out to be a little bit corrupt herself. But I would I would like. I don't care how progressive you are, like as long and I'll criticize you when you get into office, but you cannot have a guy up there who's willing to cover up murder. Can't have it. I mean, I, I don't think that's a very big bar. It's not. It shouldn't be hard. It shouldn't be hard to figure out. And um, is it 2026 when he comes up for reelection? I think that's it. Yeah, it is. It's, so he was just reelected with like 99 percent of the vote. And again, people will probably forget about this by then. Maybe want, they won't. I though. Like this could campaign saying signs now. That's my suggestion on this. Like I, I'm a campaign guy. Like I've done a lot of campaigns from small to big to large corporations. And we should start campaign yard signs all across the district. And I would say like right now, anybody but Morrissey 2026. That's that's the campaign sign yard sign. Yeah, you know, it, it like well, a lot a lot happened. A lot depends on how this goes down. Like if this turns into a complete disaster for him and Karen Reed is acquitted and no. the feds and the feds come in and they charge the actual like imagine Colin Albert gets charged like this now. We have him on video, Michael Morrissey on video, defending a man who, if he's arrested for killing a cop was arrested for killing a cop. Like there is, you, there's no coming back from that. That audio will be there forever. So he hitched his entire political future to an 18 year old punk who goes around making videos, talking bang, bang on them advantage boys. And let's talk about like, and I brought this up the other night of my show. Like what if Colin Albert was black? Like, does anybody, like, does anybody think that if Colin Albert was some kid what if he was Monica Canning Grant's kid? Somebody like that, right? Some black kid from Roxbury who goes around getting in fights a lot, right? That's what he's known for. And he goes online and he's making videos talking about, yo, I'll bang on you, son. Because that's what Colin Albert's saying in these videos. Would the district attorney vouch for that man? 
that young man and call him an 18 year old repeatedly and call him a young man over and over again? Would he vouch for him? No, it's because Colin is a privileged boy, right? He, 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 he's, he's the most, he is the face of privilege, right? He is a, an eighties throwback jock who had, who, who, you know, we were, it was supposed to be a relic of the past. Like this whole, like feminism was supposed to get rid of people like this and marginalize them. But apparently they still have a lot of institutional power because Colin, right, is so privileged that he can kill a Boston police officer or be in the house when a Boston police officer is killed and never even get questioned. He has never been questioned by police ever to this day the you know, the state police have never questioned him about this. They've never asked where he was. They've never asked to look at his cell phone, nothing like that. And but, 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 but no. wait, some for like, I just want to make sure. Cause a lot of people are new to this too, but I think most mm. people know, obviously, cause most people are, are familiar with Turtle Boy and following him, the listeners, but for the few who don't just want to say like, he did get questioned, didn't he? You, you prove like, so, you know, over the months you've been providing so much documentation and alluding to things and people were even questioning you on those. And we found out something big, I think like in the last week to 10 days about Bridgewater state university, there was a federal grand jury. You, you were talking about this. It's been proven. This kid was served with some papers at a dorm. I'm very familiar with because my girlfriend used to actually, that was her dorm. I went to that college. I know actually Kelleher. I went to school with Kelleher at Bridgewater state. I the was an athlete. deputy, the deputy police yeah. chief who lived across yeah. the street. Oh, yeah. whose ring camera was never subpoenaed. Or I like Tommy. Like I like him, but you know, that was the culture too. I would say of Canton. Like I know Canton bulldogs. I know that kind of culture he grew up in. His father was a cop. Um, I like Tommy, but I, yeah, it's so funny to know that he was served at Woodhall, which used to be an all girls dorm. I think it's co-ed now, which is interesting, but uh, he was served there like he was. So he that means he must have testified to a grand jury, right? Right. Oh, you subpoenaed for uh, to come in front of a grand jury and they're not bringing you in there to ask for your favorite color. Right. They're, they're bringing you in here because they have some sort of probable cause linking you to whatever happened inside that house. Like if he wasn't in that house, they have no interest to him. So we know he was inside the house and they've denied that he's ever been questioned. And now we have proof of it because all it took was a public records request to Bridgewater, Bridgewater state, state police and they got it documented. So they, you they can't find on me. They probably got a weed. Uh, I, I actually, if you FOIA me at Bridgewater state, there might be a weed. <laughs> I got, yeah, I don't, I don't know what you'd feel yeah. with me at UMass. Weed. A, I got, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know, but with, with Colin, with Colin, it's like, uh, you know, th that alone proves that he he did something like they have an interest in him and it was four months ago so yep, a lot of people said ago. well there's no indictment and, and let me like, bring that up too because if it happened four months ago the date was right before you started reporting on this right so you can't say that i'm the the catalyst for this like that means the feds were on to him already so that means that like the story that i'm jumping on here has legs like the the fbi seems to think it's legitimate uh, before I even jumped on it, they they were of the same opinion of me, looking at the same information. I'm surprised it took them this long, and and the only reason it's ever come out like this is because they fucked with the wrong woman. You know, they they fucked with a woman who is very smart and very savvy and isn't going to capitulate and and is just clearly principled, right? And, and a lot of people in her situation when facing life in prison would do what the district attorney wanted her to do, which was plea to manslaughter. Right. So, and they would agree to drop the second degree murder so that they can just move on. Like that's all they wanted from her. They, they upcharged her. So she would plead to manslaughter. Yeah. Like with her, with no criminal record, she'd get like six months with like 10 years exactly. probation, you know, and she could have taken the easy way out. But it's like, no, no, principles matter. She didn't kill John O'Keefe and she's not going to let. And, and if she took go that deal, lie. And if and she, she took she, that deal, yeah. it would protect the killers. Exactly. And it, it would be living a lie too. It's just right. Like, and I'm glad she took that stance. And it's, um, and she, it's funny. She worked at Fidelity. That was my first job after I was a failed school teacher. I know uh, some people call you a failed school teacher. I was actually a failed school teacher. <laughs> at what school? Triton, Triton Regional High School. Oh. And I coached there for three years as a head coach. And I was an assistant coach at Hamilton. When I was a big time wrestler. I was more of a wrestling coach than a teacher, mm. put it that way. And yeah, I was yeah. young. 
you know, yeah, I you know, I like I like teaching. It was uh, I, I I I mean not to brag, but I felt like I was pretty good at it. Like I I I my kids, I, I made sure they actually learned the United States history through and through. I taught um, Reconstruction to the present, and you know, there was two other teachers, and I'm not dogging on them or anything like that, but like I made sure that we got up to modern, like the present day. Cause, and, cause a lot of them would stop by like, you know, the sixties or whatever, but I wanted them to learn all about, you know, how we got to where we are today. Cause there's a lot that happens between, you know, 1968 and whenever I was teaching there, 2012 the or best whatever. time. Like that was used to, cause I'm a history guy. I was a history mm -hmm. major too, social studies, you know, and like the best time, like in history, that's what I always want to know about. And they mm -hmm. always skip it. It's like, let's do world war two civil war. Let's do all these other, it's like, no, I want to hear about like the, like, you know, from the fifties on, at least, I mean, come on. Cause I would tell them I'd, you know, I, I, to make their parents feel old, I'd give them this, I go, you're going to go home and ask your parents about the nineties kids. And yeah. you know, you're going to ask them a lot like mom, what was OJ? Like, what, what do you remember about OJ? Like, what, like some of the biggest cultural things, like from my youth, like just to make the parents feel old. Cause the kid, it's like, these kids didn't remember these, a lot of these kids don't remember nine 11. And so it's like interesting to go back and like, cause that's history. Like the nineties are history. Exactly. Now. And it's all history. You know, a lot, it's a lot of what you live through. So yeah, um, you know, uh, I, I, a lot of the work I do now, like as a teacher, I mean, as a, as a writer, um, you know, I was gonna say you're teaching it's, on your show. You are you call it the classroom. <laughs> so, like, uh, yeah. like, so one of my favorite journalists is a socialist, Upton Sinclair. Are you familiar with him? I've heard of him. I, I, Upton I, Sinclair yeah, wrote the Jungle. Yeah, so say he, he wrote that. He's book. A, he's what's called a muckraker, and Teddy Roosevelt gave him that name because it was supposed to sound negative, but they embraced it. Um, and muckrakers were independent journalists who just kind of went around exposing wrongdoings in society in order to act as a catalyst for change. So he wrote this book called The Jungle, which exposed the horrible. Uh, disgusting. I've actually read the book. It's gross. It's about, he tours this meat packing plant in Chicago and people learn where the meat comes from. Now he's a socialist. So the angle he was taking was he was trying to get people to believe, to, to empathize with the workers, right? Like they're working in horrible conditions, but That's where me. people were, what people were really upset about was what they were eating. And it led to major reforms like the meat inspection act and the pure food and drug act passed as a direct result of his reporting. And so like, that's the kind of model that I like to set as a journalist, right? Like I am, I don't write legislation, but I like to think that I expose wrongs and, and because of the size of my audience that they make enough noise, right. That we write, that we correct wrongs. That's why we're having protests outside of the courthouse because we are not, we are letting judge Canoni know that we're watching. And I do think it has influenced her behavior slightly since we started doing that. Yeah, you you uh, laid out a lot there. Uh, I definitely want to talk about what comes next too, but uh, just some of the details, like um, even more recently, like there hasn't been a lot of there has been news coverage, but it was mostly like news coverage of exactly what Morrissey said. Um, I know you get boycotted a lot. I know that they've been forced to cover you at times, and then they cover you in weird ways, and they mostly rip you off, like they do to us in a way. Um, but like you. Like on this story, even the right wing, like Howie Carr and Dan Ray is Minahan. Like, are they covering this? Are they going to? Well, cover actually, it? it's funny because Grace Curley messaged me today. So I am going to be going on with her soon. I don't know. I, I think she's on before Howie. So, uh, but, you know, I love Howie and I'm not going to disparage Howie, but old Howie would have been all over this. This is like kind of like Howie 2.0 now. Um, and I think he's just kind of writing it out and doing the Trump thing and doing the political thing. Whereas like back in the day, Howie in the nineties was, you know, he made his bread going after, local. you know, local. the most, yeah, the powerful, like the bulgers, right? Like yeah, exactly. local, right? Exactly. Like, so that's how Howie did his thing. So I'm, I'm, I'm happy to go on with Grace. I'm going to be going on with Kirk Minahan later this week to talk about the Sandra Birchmore case is really more up his alley because he did the case podcast about that. And, you know, that happened in Kent too. Like that, it's crazy. There's 351 Same towns so, yeah. in Massachusetts. And uh, the two really most egregious stories, I think, happen in the same town in Canton. And it involves a lot of, like you said, the, the same people are involved in this. And it's just like, I've learned a lot about how policing works. Uh, it, 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 it doesn't. Like, <laughs> in a lot of these, it seems like it does. Like, there's a lot of human error. There's a lot of um, things that leeway and a lack of oversight. 
in a lot of these things uh, because nobody's watching it. Like if you had read Nicholas Guarino's report in the Sandra Birchmore case, Matt Farwell, the Stoughton cop who was last seen going into her apartment, who's like a foot taller and it looks like a monster who had, who had the motive to kill her, right? She's having, she's pregnant. He doesn't want her to have the baby. She's going to do it anyway. She does not seem suicidal in the least. They find her um, prison style killing herself. It looks like, you know, with uh, by the doorknob, like that's how you kill yourself in prison. People outside of prison do it other ways because there's easier ways to do it. And so like that whole thing just doesn't make any sense at all. And I believed it. I believed it was a suicide when it happened because I'm like, yeah, they're not going to cover. Come on. They're not. A cop can't just walk into a freaking building and then a bunch of other cops cover. I thought that was banana land. But now I realize it's really not that freaking hard. All you need is a guy like Nicholas Garino, the state police forensic expert, who Matt Farwell tells him when he asks for his phone, I deleted all the messages between me and Sandra Birchmore. And Garino goes, well, whoop de doo I guess they're gone forever somehow. Like, that's just wild to me that the state police just threw. There's no way they believe that. And it makes and me wonder, like, who video, else have you done that? that video too? That kills me. That this guy, the cop, is an anti-masker, and in the surveillance mask, he never. They said he never wore a mask, right? Oh, really? I don't know. I, that's I don't what know. I'm. That's what I heard. And he's wearing a mask. So I, yeah, you know, I just wonder about that. And he looks like an ogre when he, like, the size difference when he goes in that video and with the hood on. I know it's winter and everything, but at the same time, it's like, come on. Come on, like you know, you, you'll never. And that case will never get solved. Like there's, there's no way they, unless they actually look at the phone and they can prove that her phone, um, was not moving while he was. If it stopped moving while he, then they have like some probable cause. But if they're not even going to do that, it's impossible to solve this murder. Now the federal investigation could be that and this combined. It could have started with Sandra. We don't know what it is, but something's going on there. I have a feeling you know more. I don't know if you actually know more. Kirk knows I, more about that than me. Like he's the expert. But on even the with this point. case, the Karen Reed, is there like major bombshells that you know that you're holding on to just because you have to, because of a source or you're protecting or anything a, like there, that? There's a, there, there's a couple and I'm, and, and I, I'm very cognizant of sources. Um, and you know, sometimes I almost wish people didn't tell me these things if I can't report on them. But when somebody tells me something, cause I get, I get so excited about it and I'm like, I can't, I really can't say this. But, uh, you know, some stuff people are, you know, looking to protect themselves and they're like, well, can you do it at this time? And I got to wait a little bit. So there is some stuff that I have that I can't talk about. Um, but I do know that it will all come out in time and I will get a chance to be the first one to break it when it, when it is a, the appropriate time for this stuff to come out. But, you know, hang on to your hats because there is a, a lot more out there and it's going to be jaw dropping. Um, and I'm waiting for the prosecution to drop their bombs. They keep talking about how they have some big bombs, which I think they're full of shit. Um, but I'm also worried about like, they're so committed to this. Like, what else are you motherfuckers looking to plant? Like, what other bullshit do you have up your sleeve? Like, what else are you going to find? And whatever they do at this point, luckily the public will be skeptical of whatever they come up with. They're going to be like, you're full of shit. And I'm sure we'll all get debunked, but I'm like, they're just so committed to destroying this woman who's done nothing wrong to them. And it's just scary. It, it's, it's frightening what they're doing to this woman. Lunchbox Lally. How do you come up with these nicknames for people? I don't know. Like, uh, he just looked like the kind of guy with his hair gel there that like, it's, he, it's like, it's his first day of school and his mommy packs his lunchbox. It, it just seems like he's like the last, you know, when, you know, he's got like Morris, he's probably got like 10 ADAs under his office or something. You know, Lally is the last one. Like he gets the worst assignments. Like, Oh, we'll give it to lunchbox. He'll, he'll, you know what I mean? Like he's got no charisma, no charm. Like they give him this loser case that no one can win. And Lally will go out there and he'll read off of his piece of paper and his Charlie Brown teacher voice. And, you know, he'll take one for the team. Like, cause Lally up until this point has been the enemy, but I've always said, I'm like, Lally is just a stooge from Morrissey. Morrissey and Proctor are the two bad guys in the story. More than Brian Albert, more than Jennifer McCabe, more than Colin Albert. I know it's really easy to hate all those people because like Jen McCabe is just so detestable, but like the two people most responsible for this are Michael Morrissey 
and Michael Proctor. And we never hear from them until we heard from his fat ass the other day. Let me ask you a question. Like uh, any doubt that what we, I think what you think is true. Like, do you, do you have any doubt that there's any percentage that Karen Reed did this? Like I went to say I, 99 to hundred percent. Like what would you put your percentage? Uh, I would bet my children's lives on this. Like I would bet everything on this, my mortgage, you name it. Like, God, like, and I challenge anyone else to answer that question too. I'm like gun to your head. Serious question. Gun to your head. Right? I would bet on it. I would bet right. that like, Reed is innocent. I right. Would. Your life I, I is, your like life 99%. is on the line. Like that's what I put it. You'd never freaking know in anything, but I would say like, that's as high as you could say. Like I think Chuck, I'm, GPT comes I'm back at 99.9, you know? Right. Like I'm all for yeah. hearing both sides. I'm dying to hear the other exactly. side. Exactly. It'd be interesting. Like you said, when Karen they Reed. come out with their opposition, like when they drop their, their evidence, I want to ask you another question. Cause this is like the Wendy. The Wendy and the Jennifers, the critics, they are calling you saying that you're paid by uh, Karen Reed's defense fund, which I think is uh, like bonkers because I see you raising money. I gave, I gave money yeah. to it at the end of the day. And, and, and in reality, too, like how much money she's spending, it's like, I know Karen Reed worked at Fidelity. I worked at Fidelity. My family worked at Fidelity. Like I know how, you know, I was a financial guy. I'm sure she made great money, but working person like that you're going to run out of money and like i don't believe that they're paying you i don't no, and, and parents, now they're saying, parents are they're saying they're paying patient. me too which is like <laughs> yeah. so what are you going to say to that you know uh, uh, it's absurd uh first of all like people see where i get paid the like, people donate regular people donate on the show like it, it's very i'm it's very transparent where my money's coming from it's coming from the people right they like what i'm doing they're willing to pay for it that's how capitalism works right and it's not and 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 i, I resent the idea or the implication that the only reason that these people all believe this is because i'm lying to them i'm, I'm the pied piper it's insulting not only to me it's more insulting to them because it's saying that you're these people who are very intelligent and very it, it, w will just blindly believe anything. And it's nonsense. If I told lies, like my followers call me out on love shit. Me, yeah, I love it. I get I to get, that too. You have, uh, like me, I, I've been watching this shit for months and years. I guarantee there are other leftists because I hear from them. They ask me about you. Mm -hmm. Like, do you have moderates and leftists? Oh, yeah. So, like, my, my biggest, uh, you know, my kind of number two in this situation, she's from London, right? People uh, follow me, know who she is. She does all my YouTube shit. She does the store shit. She's great. She's essential to this. She's a radical leftist. And you we do don't have even, a friend that's a radical. Oh leftist. yeah. We don't even talk about politics though. It's a waste of time. She has her positions. I have mine and she's just like, what, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? We're, we're, we're never going to agree, but what we can focus on together is this blog, which is really important and getting this information out there. And we do agree on that. I'm throwing rapid fire at you. I, I was almost hyperventilating earlier. I don't know if you noticed, like I, I have a new thing where I, I can have panic attacks and I was kind of oh, having don't one. Have, don't, have one up. Oh, don't worry. But now it. I feel really good. Actually. Yeah. I got to wrap. So do you ever feel stress from all this shit that goes through your life from this? This is what you do. Oh, for sure. You know, you mentioned that before I came on, like I took a mental health break, uh, back in February of early 2021, you know, I just had a lot of shit going on in my personal life. It all kind of accumulated and like exploded. And I was so like putting on this front uh, for people that like everything's fine because I'm this public face. Right. And so I always have to go on on Tuesday You're and on. Saturdays and make it seem like I'm fine. But I wasn't fine. And it was fucking hard to pretend. And finally, I just had to have this thing. Like I remember being unable to write blogs for two days. And I remember it was a February 2nd, 2021. And I'm like, I just, I'm going to be very honest. I'm going to write a blog and be honest about how I'm feeling right now. And I'm like, I can't write. I can't do anything right now. And, and, and the reception I got from that was just overwhelming. Like the amount of people that messaged me that were like, it was like my me too movement. Like so many people messaged me and were like, I dude, I like, I, I'm feeling the same way. I'm glad somebody else is experiencing this right uh and, and because i'm having these thoughts too or i'm dealing with this and i'm stressed out by that and so because yeah like this is overwhelming at times right but like i've learned to roll with the punches as time goes on and i've learned kind of that i just don't care like yeah like i have flaws in my personal life like, i love it because you 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 have like uh i mean you've taken all the shit that you put out to your to your the ratchets let's put it that way the ones that are really upset 
you've taken it just as much back. And I think shown an example in a way, like I think the ratchet should be stronger and like own up to when they're wrong. Like that. If you call me out on anything I did when I was younger, when I was dumb, say, yeah, I did it. I'm, I was dumb. Like people don't do that. Like, I, I feel like uh, I wonder about you too. Is there any chance we can soften you up? Like, do you I'm feel with softy. this new I'm thing? Yeah. Like, yeah, you know, like with this new thing with Karen Reed, uh, would you focus more on big investigations like this? Oh yeah. Like I love this shit. This is what I like the other shit, the ratchet stuff. That's filler. Right. I consider the Monica and Grant stuff very serious. Like I, I took that serious because that's involves law and order. Right. Like that's a serious thing. Um, and the trooper gate thing, like those are my bread that and butter. Huge. Are those stories is how I built my credibility, my brand. The other stuff is like, well, those stories don't come along every day. So in the meantime, you got to have some filler, right? You got to talk about other things that are lighter and, and that entertain people. Um, but there needs to be a message. Like the overall message of even like the ratchet stuff is like these people are, I don't want to, I feel like the blog has evolved. Like if you go back to like 2017, like I cringe at some of the blogs I wrote where, you know, it just kind of seems like it's just punching down. Like you said before, right. Talking right. about. But sometimes junkies. I got to say it's necessary too. like, and, and not even punch it down. Like I, I'll give you another story that I just freaking loved I, how I make my money. I used to be a financial advisor. I got busted for weed it ruined my life. Like when before it was legal yeah. and it was a very small amount. And I, and I was being a meathead because I was speeding. That was, you know, so it was kind of my fault. And I also had other issues where I worked at AIG. But anyways, so I lost everything, like financially. But I came back. And, and what I do is I walk friggin' dogs for a living. I have a great dog walk business. But, um, you know, the thing, like, I, I just feel like people need a comeback. And I, I feel like, uh, I don't know. I just feel like what you're doing now is so far beyond. You know, and I, and I feel like my audience has evolved. Like I've people notice, you know, people do notice that like it, you wouldn't know it from the mouth breathers on Twitter or whatever, but they're not representative of how actual people are feeling. They're just the loudest people in the room. So exactly. it's all, it's all you hear and see. So it's like, you think it's bigger than it actually is, but most people are just silently watching and they're silently observing. And I guarantee there's a lot of people on the left who are your followers who are watching this conversation right now. And I'm like, ah, oh, this guy isn't, I thought this guy was like a crazy white supremacist. I thought this guy was like, you know, some crazy homophobe and blah, blah, blah. It's like, well, that's no, I'm just, I'm just a regular person. Because they're going to say I'm humanizing you and I'm platforming you. I'm God forbid. Go. God forbid humanizing a human. Well, maybe I'm trying to make oh, you a nicer person. Maybe I like I, I have hope for Turtle Boy. I really do. I Because I feel like you you do such like stuff they're not doing. The globe doesn't do this shit. Like, you know, that's the other oh, thing. It's why. not just scary that the politic yeah. politicians do it. And that's the other story I want to talk about. The the canine story. Like I'm a dog guy, right? I <laughs> I work with fucking dogs all day. I love them. I talk to dogs all day. I have the best fucking life now. Everyone no likes dogs. No Everyone stress that comes from my show and my relationships, like my real relationships. Keep that shit good. So I'm doing great. But these people, there's a lot of them who have abused animals. You've, you've exposed that. They're doing charity scams. And then the one that I, I like, that Falco, the canine. And these are powerful people, like a firefighter and a, and a Channel 5 reporter. Yeah, she's like, the more powerful one, her. Yeah. Like she's the one that got a free. So like, Tyler do Falcon, or, you know, I don't think yeah. people get that on like the angry left. That's mad at me for putting you on. I, you can't be a fair critic. If you can't say when someone's doing good things and those right. are you gotta tip your hat. Even when you don't like the person, you got to tip your hat and their unwillingness to do so shows that like, they don't actually care. They don't actually stand for anything. They just don't. They're just trolls. Like the literal, like you're the definition of a troll. And I would get along. Like I would talk to some of these people if they actually wanted to talk. Like I had Ernst on my show. Okay. So I met Ernst. The first time I met him was when I was with Rayla Campbell and we were protesting at violence in Boston's grand opening. Right. And Ernst comes over and he gets in her face and then he gets in my face and he goes away after like two minutes. And then he comes on the live show that night. He's in the comments and he wants to come on. So I, I, I invited him on. I sent him a link and he came on and we talked for 60 minutes. If you actually watch that conversation, like it ends very cordially. So, but then afterwards he wants to put on this front, like, he, you know, oh, we hate each other. It's like, it's all for show. You don't actually hate me, Ernst. You have no reason to hate me, right? We disagree on all that shit. Okay, cool. But like, I don't think you're freaking evil. Do you right? feel like he, he, you were maybe wrong on some of the coverage on him too? Like uh, in terms of, you know, People really didn't know if he did something. And with what that thing in Swamp Scott? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I 
justice was served, right? The charges. Yeah, were he was dropped, found right? innocent. Not even innocent. The oh, charges were dropped. Yeah, charges. Right? Yeah, even right? better. Right? Oh, so, there you go. That's good. Okay, so there's no ev if there's no strong evidence to convict him of something, then you drop it. Right. Yeah. I think watching the video, it's inconclusive. It gets blocked. You don't see what happens. When, you don't see who, th if she throws I something. I think in. it's pretty conclusive, but I mean, I could see how, I don't think it's a hundred percent, but I think if I had to bet on it, I think it's conclusive enough. That's what I would say. And you know who else strongly believed that and like took up that Catherine vital. Do you know who she is? Uh, I know of her. She's like the lead anti uh, COVID mandate person and anti mass person in Boston. She's running for city council. Doesn't have much of a war chest, probably a real long shot to win. Um, but, you know, she's on my team for most of the shit, but she like convinced. So she's like, no, Ernst is innocent. And she like took up the fucking cause. And no, I'm like, that, I respect that. That's principle. You know, that like good. that's principle. So again, you need more yeah. of that. And yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll probably call out. Catherine Vittil on like everything except for that. Right. So, you know, it's like good, with, you, uh, good for you, Catherine. Thank you for doing that. I, that's and I think, anyway. you know, I don't know Rod Weber and I don't know Lauren Pespisa. I don't know them. Maybe they're decent people. Maybe if I got to know them, maybe they would not be so bad. Right. Maybe we just disagree. But like some people have no intention of that whatsoever. And we're not even going to give those people attention by, by saying their names, but we know who they are. They're just professional trolls who are miserable, who wake up every day. And their goal is to go on Twitter and just be negative to people. Well, let me ask you about them. Out. Cause there's this guy, the, he thinks he's, he thinks you're the pet turtle, but I, I really think that he's your pet turtle. Like that's yeah, you, you ever like, see me talking about him. Does he promote you really? I mean, these, these turtles like opponents are really promoting you. Aren't they in a way? <laughs> and they don't even realize it. It's like, that's what makes me more intriguing to the outsiders. They're like, well, this guy has a whole team of trolls dedicated to him. Well, that's interesting. And Let's the watch worst person of the world hates him. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Like this person who's, you know, universally unlikable, doesn't like him. Well, that's interesting. I'm going to give him a shot. So I guess, thank you from that. Uh, you know, when he, when he's the one always talking about me, but I never like tweet about him or anything yeah, like that. You don't even respond unless I, who's pet is who? Who's yeah. pet is who? <laughs> yeah. you know? like, right. It's so true. So, Cause I'm not going to give somebody like that. My, my time because they're not, they're not worth they're it. Not they're worth just it. A, they win when you even engage with them. Exactly. And, and nobody. But, so. Yeah. And it's so funny though, uh, that they really do give you troll to go give you hits. I want to ask you what's next because I know there's some big events. You got shows coming up, and you got uh, people are going to say I'm promoting Turtle Boy Daily News. TB Daily News is the website. Yeah, you're promoting but, justice. Yeah, justice. and there's other there's other websites too. I want to shout out the Facebook groups because I really like them too. There's all kinds of people in there, and they don't talk politics. They really don't. They're trying to be non-political. They welcome everyone. And it's about these issues like there's uh, Canton Confidential. That's about the city of Canton. They want to yeah. make Canton a good place. And they're good people who are citizens. And I think they even allow outsiders like me in there. I'm in there. And there, there are a lot of good people running that. And then there's Justice for John O'Keefe and Karen Reed on Facebook. I'm part of those groups. I like those folks. Um, and you have some things coming up next. What, what's going on next? Yeah. So uh, this week, uh, Wednesday, I was going to... Uh, write a blog about it probably tonight. Uh, we are going to have a protest in Quincy at the Adams Inn because uh, Michael Morrissey is having his annual, I don't know if it's a fundraiser or get together or something. And uh, it's at, it, it, in Quincy. And so we are going to be down there protesting him because it, all this internet shit means nothing. If you don't show up in person, you need to show up in person, make your voices heard, make them un make the powerful uncomfortable uh, and, and, and let them know we're actually real people. I'm not just user five, four eighty eight on Twitter, right. That, 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 that's chirping at you. Like I'm here and I'm offended and I'm pissed and I'm not going to let you do this and, and you're going to be held accountable for that. So we will be doing that. Um, I have some other, um, smaller protests gathering. My goal is there are 27 towns in Norfolk County. Um, I am getting cards made with a QR code to my video framed that I wrote that, that kind of sums this all up. And, I'm going to be going to every town in Norfolk County and going to like some sort of mall or grocery store or something and having conversations with people about this. Cause if you're not living in Facebook or Twitter, you're not seeing a lot of this stuff or on YouTube, you're not seeing this stuff. And that's the majority of the people are not on social media. So you got to find these people because these are potential jurors 
And I'm not doing this for clicks and whatever. I'm doing this so that Karen Reed doesn't go to jail for the rest of her life. That means something to me, right? I don't know Karen Reed, but I feel for Karen Reed. And I am emotionally invested in this. And I am not willing to sit back and, and, and not use my platform for good. Like that woman needs to be free for all of us. And uh, the people who killed John O'Keefe need to be held responsible for that. Yeah, for John O'Keefe, too, I feel like I, I know his family. Uh, you guys haven't always gotten along, you know, and they may not even be happy I'm doing the show. But I feel like for that guy, like I, yeah, a lot of times people think I hate cops. I've left and, and the leftists get mad at me because I don't know out of the way I hate cops. I don't like like the institution of policing. But if you get rid of it, what do you replace it with gang? So we're kind of stuck in a lot of with a lot of these issues. But I'm I grew up with cops like I know cops. I'm friends with cops like people get mad at me for saying that. I don't hate cops as individuals. I'm with what Turtle Boy said earlier. It's the corruption among the police. Right. And, and I, I love that you're exposing this. I want it to succeed. I, I'm I'm asking the people on the left and the moderates to to come out and support Karen Reed, support John O'Keefe. Right. Like because it's not to, about like, me. It's yeah, about get over Turtle Boy. You can hate yeah, his get politics. Over me. I hate Turtle Boy's politics. <laughs> I hate a lot of the shit he's done. I'm trying to change him. I'm trying to be like a priest now, for Christ's sakes, with him. But well, you're not going to change my opinion on politics. You, but, you know, like whatever. Like, not. You know, I, I, know I know it's not. impossible. And See, I'm not even going, nobody, yeah. nobody changes their opinion. Exactly. We, like but it is what it is. Me, you know, I just want to be real tonight because I right. feel like uh, I support you on this and I want to see you succeed and I want to see the whole community and not just this, like all the other ones. I see this shit all the time here about people I can't cover. I, I walk dogs. I'm a part timer at this. You're doing this shit full time. You can do so much more with your platform and what you are. You know, you're already doing it. You do you really feel like I feel like I'm in a good place right now in my life for once. <laughs> It took a lot of work. I feel like you might be in, in a weird way right now. Are you in a really good place? Do you feel like you're yes. on a mission, like almost like born again type shit? Uh, it's it's a great feeling to wake up every day and love what you do. You know, I did love teaching, um, but there was just aspects of it that I just couldn't, that just bothered me, you know, um, and I won't bore you with all the details, but it just bothered me. And I'm like, I'm going to get burned out in doing this if I do this until I retire, you know? You need to wake up every day and do something that you love. And I do that now. And I feel like I love what I do now more than I did a couple of years ago, um, because these stories like this are so fulfilling, right? To, to do stuff like this and see that you're actually making a difference and helping a good person who did nothing wrong fight pure evil. Like that's the only way to describe what Michael Morrissey is pure evil um, because no one else is doing it, man. Like if I'm not going to, if I'm not doing this, if I'm not writing about this, it's sad that you can't count on the Boston Globe. I mean, this is a, a exactly. great story. And what are they writing about? I mean, what like what are you? You have a team of people, hundreds of employees, and no one is full time on the Karen Reed story. It's crazy. One hundred percent. And that's how I thank God you're at least here on this <laughs> shit. Uh, and we got so many comments saying so many listeners. Like usually, I'm posting the comments, but I didn't dare to even look. I thought I would have a panic attack. It looks like mostly people like me right now, but I, yeah. don't know, I don't know. Maybe the left people are still mad at me, but there's so many. We, we, we might do that, but I, I want to see if we could take calls tonight. Calls? I've never I, seen you take calls from listeners, from people you know how to do that? who love and hate you. Yes, I do. Okay. We have a phone number. on. If anyone oh, you calls, have a phone number. You have 978 560 This is my burner number. And let's see if it works. Sometimes it doesn't work, but I think I have it working. Nice. I got to set that up. See, I, Anyone I, calls. I what I do is I I share the link like that you sent me to do it, but then you get you risk the porn bomb. You know about porn bombs? Yeah. When people when people like uh, you send that the link and, and a malicious person uh, exactly. clicks on it, and then you click on bring that up, and somebody jerking off. It's like oh fuck, we got porn bomb. Uh, yeah, I, I try to stay away from any shit that I don't know. But here's a phone call. Let's do that. Thing. Ah, here we go. Let's see who we got. We got a hater. We got a lover. We got someone who. Let's see who it is. If we can get them up. Are you there? Can you hear us? Oh, no. Not working yet. Hello, listener. Can you hear us? I'm going to try it again. I'm going to, uh, you know, Turtle Boy, kill a little time for me and let me see if I can figure this out because sometimes I have to reset it. All right. Cool. Any, anything you want to talk about? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh <laughs> A lot of people in the comments talking about this other channel, Yellow Cottage Tales. Uh, 
I'm not even sweating what he said tonight. You people watching, you know, it was it was a complete meltdown. I don't know where that came from, but it was, uh, you know, it's sad to see that Kevin did that. It's really sad to see that he not only insulted me, but he insulted all of you by suggesting that you're mindless and you're unable to think for yourselves. And the only reason that we uh, are doing this is because we've been, I've manipulated you and I'm working for the prosecution. I don't know how why he's doing this but it's really sad to see because i liked kevin before this and i've been nothing but respectful to him and i've had him up on my show before and it's just really sad to see that i don't know why he would do that and especially like my policy is like if you're gonna run your mouth about somebody and make up baseless accusations about them talk like give them the invite everybody's watched my show over the years knows i invite everyone up everyone has an open invitation I've ever written about to come up to my face and tell me how they really feel. And he wouldn't do that. And I thought that was really cowardly. I just think it's really disappointing. And let me ask you, uh, were, was his partner on there? Uh, uh, did he get a pushback or anyone else on the show? Yeah, though no, it was very awkward. <laughs> There's three other people up there and they're all just like, yeah, I don't, I don't agree, Kevin. And it just made, it seemed like it made him more mad that no one was, it was just reinforcing this idea that like, you're, I, 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 you've I, all been brainwashed. You've all been brainwashed. Everyone's crazy except me. It was a total meltdown. And it's really sad to see. Maybe someone spoke to him. I, I think that people just want to be contrarian. I think they see this and they don't want to be just another person who is jumping on the Karen Reed is innocent train, but there's really no other way like there's no way she did this it's it's inexplainable i've yet to hear any theory that holds up to questioning right about how karen reed could have done this like anybody please i've been begging explain a way to me in which karen reed did this in which the evidence makes sense and adds up and they just can't do it because they know they know and it's like i get wanting to be objective i get wanting to like both sides it or whatever but after a while you just have to come to reach the conclusion that like it is what it is right it is like th this is just a frame up and it does sound elaborate and it does sound ridiculous and far-fetched but it's not our job to figure out who killed John O'Keefe. That's the government's job. It's our job to discuss whether or not Karen Reed did this and if there's evidence that she did this. And there isn't. Therefore, someone else did. That Now it's their job to figure that out because there's things that we can't do. We can't loom in all that house, right? We can't go through their phones and look at their phone records. We can't do that shit. The police can. The government can. They just choose not to. And so all we can do is just point to the lack of evidence or Karen Reed and say, clearly it wasn't her, but he's dead. So someone did that. So who, what, who, you know, you figure it out. Of course, I'm having a lot of issues with this phone line. It shows like it was connected. So I just shut down my phone. I couldn't even shut it down because so many calls were coming in every time. Really? I shut it out, like phones are ringing off the hook, but, Apparently. and, and I've been answering, but I'm, I'm trying one more time. I just okay. shut my own phone down just to see sometimes it's, this thing is funky. I don't know why. You know, I'm reading, I'm reading the comments. True crime with Eve says the biggest slam dunk for me, uh, that Karen is innocent is the Gemma cave. And I agree that that Google search is so damning, but what I think is even more slam dunk is the autopsy photos, man. I mean, the, cause they, they'll tell you some bullshit about the Google. Oh, it didn't happen or, you know, and it's bullshit, but whatever. Like, I'm not even going to argue that the autopsy photos are the autopsy photos and the autopsy photos. There is no explanation for how Karen's car did that. There's none. Every attempt to explain it is laughable and ridiculous. And they don't even have a theory. I don't know if they're ever going to have a theory. They're going to need one at trial. And when they actually produce it, it's going to be so stupid. And it's going to get torn apart by world-class defense attorneys. Like the teams are slaughtered about uh, that's one thing that Karen Reed has to her advantage with this. And I, and if she's listening, I, uh, I'm sure she's worried about her future. And so I just want to reassure her that like, this is like a football team. Like this is like a JV football team going against the Patriots. God. Oh, here we go. Finally fucking got it. Here we go. Hopefully. Hold on. That's still not. Hello, listener. You're on the air with turtle boy. What do you got for us? Hey, this is Semolina. How are you? Good. Oh, you hi, Semolina. She's good. She's a nice lady. Hey, I I try to be. Um, actually, I have a question for Aiden. What do you think is going to go down on 
in September at the next hearing because I'm dying to know your thoughts about what you think is going to happen. Uh, you know, if we've learned anything from the defense is they, uh, they always surprise us, right? Like we didn't know the Canton library video was going to be like, that was a big bombshell at one of them. So th this, def they don't leak secrets. Like this idea that I always know it's a myth. Like I, I have no idea. I assume that they're going to bring the lucky law friend stuff up because like that, and that's major stuff. And I'm assuming or hoping that they've spoken to lucky since then. Right. Like if I were them, I certainly would talk to Lucky since then. Again, I don't work with the defense. So they read my stories, I'm sure. And then they can do whatever they want with them. So that's one thing I would I would I would hope that they would bring up. Um, and we might even see a trial date set on, on September 15th because I think they're ready to. I said they're just ready to get in a room and fuck like, let's do this. Like enough talk. <laughs> let's just get in a room and fuck. And so I think that we might even see that. on September 15th. So there's that. What do you think, Selena? Selena? All right. I can't wait. I'm trying to get up there. I'm in Virginia right now. I'm really trying to get up there to uh, get up there and protest, but I'm excited for it. Thank you. Thank you. Our, pho our phones are ringing off the hook. Can you hear the beeps every time? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I can hear it. <laughs> People keep calling because we're taking your All calls. All right. I'll leave room for oh, someone thank else. You. Thank, thank you, you. All right. Bye. Well, we're taking calls. Anyone? We, we, we got the phones working, so you can call in 978-560-3155. I got voicemails. We got a lot, a lot of listeners. I, I'm, I'm still, I'm canceled. I'm, I've been canceled. They, you know, what kills me is I am the, uh, the left show supposedly, and they're canceling the, their left show. Like it just doesn't make sense for them. But you know what? Look at the comments. I don't see anybody over in the comments like, yeah, Trump or Meg. It's, nobody's talking about that. We're all talking right. about Karen Reed. Exactly. So it's just nonsense. Like it's exactly. nonsense. <laughs> that's what? exactly we can't talk about, it. You can't talk about true crime. Yep. That, that's political. Like what? That's yep. crazy. And Morrissey. Like let's replace Morrissey. I love that you wanna. I wanna get Sean Hall. I want. I want if I can get Turtle Boy to endorse for Sean Hall. If he makes a stand. Hello. Hey, who's on the phone? Turtle Boy uh, sexually assaulted me when I was younger, and I would like justice. They want justice for sexual assaults when they're younger. That's unfortunate. That's I don't. Fun. I don't know what. Dan, yeah. I don't know I what mean, happened this to is that like guy. The but... unlikable shit. Like there be yeah. whoever is making those calls is like not really. I don't know, man. They're just they, trolls. They, These are children. Yeah, These are the children. people I deal with all the time. You know. Who Four else is old when this happened? The same guy. Am I taking the same? Yeah. So I'll look for that mm -hmm. number. Welcome to my <laughs> world. You know. Yeah. Welcome to my world. Oh, I, I get them I, too. I get it. sometimes I get it from Trumpers. I got a weird Trump voice you know, like a week or two ago out of the blue. I'm like, I was calling my left friends and they're trying to figure out who the fuck this guy was. But like whatever. Like I get uh when I do uh oh it's the same guy. I keep taking his call. It, I, I get these uh Black em. ones from these scammers that I because I I'm I'm the guy that's you know pro cannabis, as people know. I was an athlete, I wrestled bad back, big time. Mm -hmm cancer when I was younger. I use it for medical, but I also like it. Yeah, I like it's, I like it too, man. Yeah, I love so, pot. So I, I fought for all that shit. No, now he's calling caller ID. I'm just going to have to turn off my thing because I, I don't want to deal with the same. Yeah, idea. they he ruin it, you know? It's, yeah. and it's, he had yeah. to ruin it. That's fine. I mean, we got a couple calls. I think in. how sad and empty your yeah. life is. Like, but that's, yeah. that's what brings you joy. I feel bad for people like that, man. Well, yeah. What an empty life. What an empty life. But the thing is, like, we go after the cannabis, you know, companies, and the, and these people get really bad too. So I, I'm kind of used to that. Like, it's it's kind of fun for a second, but you know, that's it. You know, when the, legalized just, pot is awesome. That's all I gotta say. It's so fucking yeah. convenient. Except the corporations that treat these employees like shit. Like people are dying in them. It's unbelievable. You would know a lot more about that than me. Uh, all I know is my my pot place is right next to the gym, so it's really it's great. You know, you Let's exercise this and then you get pot. This is a different number. I want to see what this. Who, who's on the line now? Did I fuck it up already? Nah, I fucked it up. It's it's. You know what? I'm gonna be done with phone calls tonight. I think I've had enough. What yeah, about it's you? a shame. It's a, yeah, I'm good. I'm good. I think we're good here. It was a nice yeah. conversation. So, are you happy? Do you feel like you got everything out? Do you think enough left wingers oh, yeah. are mad at me? I don't, I think that they'll, the, the couple people will pretend that like, oh, you're canceled, but you're not nothing, nothing changed. You know, I don't think so either. Like, like I yeah. challenge any of them to watch this and, and, and point out one thing I said tonight that is objectionable, you know, that's and I it. challenge them right back too. like, what are you yeah. guys doing besides troll turtle, turtle boy? Like, you know, yeah, the like, thing I like about shimmy, shimmy actually like is feeding kids and shit and giving backpacks. Like 
I don't know. I'm about doing shit. Like, mm. and I don't do enough shit, but I've done shit. I've done a lot of shit. And, and I've been more like campaign oriented. I, I think if people like you, you can get shit done. And like, I, I thought of something tonight. I don't know if I was stealing this, but I think if you want to be a real ninja, like I'm a wrestler, I've been in fights. I've, I've, I was a good wrestler, amateur wrestler. And I'm a macho leftist, right? And one of the biggest ninja moves I think I ever pulled in my life was winning a fight without throwing a punch. Like actual wrestling or like no, a WWE? real fist fight. I want to kick my ass, drunk out of a skunk. Big no, but like, what kind of wrestling did you do? Like, the, oh, I did like, amstrad. I was a high school wrestler. At oh, okay, wrestling. so like competitive risk. Yeah. Okay, guys. And then I'm I like college the... wrestler, USA wrestling, Greco-Roman yeah. wrestling. Yeah, yeah. If I if MMA had been big, I would have like probably tried to go pro. Like that, I was want to be Olympic wrestler. But anyways, and I lost that shit early. So like, I I've been through so many ups and downs, and I think that's like. What people need to do more is, is you, sometimes you need to suffer and learn and, and build mm -hmm. and learn something new and find something new and look for signs. I'm looking for signs tonight. And I, I think about that. Can you win a fight without throwing a punch? Like that's MLK yeah. did it. That's what exactly, exactly what MLK, even, even Malcolm X, even exactly. who's more militant in the end, it was about oh, yeah, people he, liked them. People respected mm -hmm. them. That's exactly so much they had it. to kill them. They had to kill them. And, and it, like Martin Luther King is a perfect example, obviously, of just a guy that, you know, di and he took a lot of shit from people, Stokely Carmichael and other people, younger people in the movement. And John Lewis was one of the younger people in the movement who was very loyal to Dr. King um, and people, the younger folks in SNCC, uh, Students for Nonviolence Coordinating Committee, they got on him because they're like, you're not being militant enough. You know, you're not being. And, and he just stuck to the principles of nonviolence that he learned from Gandhi. And uh and it worked and it worked, you know, it was the, the protest and getting beat up and getting hosed and having the dogs attacked, you know, stuck on you that sucked. But at the end, it was all by design. It was all televised and it was designed to cause shock value. And he was a master user of the media and getting that message out. He knew how to get shit done. And so he was right in the end. I love it. I, I want to thank you, man. Cause, uh, I know I'm supposed to hate you. I hate you. Thank you. Uh, I regret this. I love this, but uh, honestly, though, because you like you like you said when you go after the ratchets and stuff, you let people respond. I saw Jamal do this. This was another turning point for me watching your shit. As I saw how Jamal handled it, and uh, it's just like if people are like, "Are you afraid he's going to come after you?" Well, I didn't really instigate you to come oh, after God. me, there, but if you ever so did, ever ever did, it's like I'm just going to go on the dude's show. Yeah. It's like, I don't just go after people that are I just know, minding their exactly. own fucking business. And, 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 you know, it's and, like, it's like what I do. If you can't explain yourself, like, this is, like, people need to be adults more, I feel like. And I know they're going to say I'm victim blaming. I don't, I'm not victim blaming. I know like, uh, your, friend, your friends that have written about, right? Like, I've, you know, I've written about Lauren and and, and um, uh, the crazy guy who, likes, who eats heart shit. Um, Rod, right? Because they look for attention. You know what I mean? They're look. They're they want. They, they want it. Enjoy they kinda, it. I think they, they kind of want it. What they're doing, yeah, actually. like they kind of want it. Like that's reciprocal. That's what in a they lot want. Of so like it's like I don't just randomly pick people out of ad. Like I'm gonna yeah. fucking destroy this person. They. It's not what I do. You know, uh, like the Kimberly Fair person. Like I didn't just pick her out of a hat. She was being aggressive, and I'm gonna like you caught my attention. You wanted attention, and now you've got it. And, and it is. And it's like, but if if at any point people are and people message me all the time. Like there's this guy, Billy Tibbetts. I don't even know who Billy is, but he's like this crazy dude. He used to be in the NHL and he oh got, my God. Oh yeah. Like yeah, he got hit, but he was like, about. I've seen some shit on him. Oh, he Tibbs, Tibbs. He's insane. He's, a fighter. he's insane. He's, he was a he's got fucking head issues. Yeah. He's got brain damage. And you know what? He contacted me about a week ago and, a and, and, and somebody who knows him did too on his behalf. And they were just honest. Like Tibbs is fucked up. Like he's got issues. Can he's been in that right? And, yeah. and I took Hold every, on. if you look for the Tibbs blogs on Turtle Boy, they're all gone. They're gone. Good. So I took Good. all the, 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 on turtleboysports.com, all of those older um, stories about Billy Tibbs, they're just gone. And I do that all the time because I'm like, my goal is not to hurt you or destroy you or have you follow this. Like the mainstream media, is, they, they never take shit down. But like, if you reform yourself and, and like, you just like, you're trying to move on with your life and this is a problem. Sure, I'll fucking take it down. Like whatever, you know. Like what? Well, I'm gonna punish you forever? No, that's not what I'm about. I want you to go after the scammers, the frauders, the animal abusers, and and I know that's a lot of what you do. So, 
like I said, I, I love so much of it. And uh, Aiden, I, I want you to have you back on. And I would like to even do like, we didn't get into the Paul, we did get into some politics, but I really want to do like some kind of political debates on the left or something. Like, well, I want to do these, more. Uh, once, once these, um, you know, the, the, the primary season heats up, there will be yeah. a lot more to talk about. Yeah. Right. So, so thank you. Tell, tell everyone one more time, like, what can, what can they do right now for especially Karen Reed? Uh, go to the uh, follow the Justice for John and Karen page on Facebook and just read up on it. Go to my channel, Turtle Boy Live. The first video you'll see there is a, a refresher of it. If you're new, if you want to catch up, because there's a lot to it, obviously, and it's going to take some time. So just watch that 30 minute video and spread the word. Talk to your family members about this because it's a fascinating case and, and everyone should know about it. Well, we're, I think we're at what what one hour and thirteen minutes. I was quick, yeah. Not long. I, mean, I think we got a lot of shit in there. We did. We did. We did. Do, do we need to get anything else? I think. I think I've I done think it. We're good. Me. We're good. Yeah. We're good. We're gonna talk soon, so. and I'm gonna be following your shit. Like I'm gonna watch. I'm sitting at home late at night watching the fucking turtle boy on the phone. <laughs> and so are all the haters, all the people that are like, "How dare you?" They're all watching too. They're all watching too. So you're no keep bringing the freaking heat, man. And, yeah. and be careful. <laughs> Please be careful. Thank you. I appreciate you having me on. Young jerks, I'm done tonight. All right. Thank you.